Hi, this is Justin from Hotspot Nymphing, and today I'm going to be fishing Beaver Creek in Virginia. So let's get to it. Today, I'm using my 10 foot 3 weight syndicate. Have a euro line on here, going to my leader. And for my first fly, I'm using a tag system. I have a hare's ear tied with an inverted bead. And then for my point fly or bottom fly, I have a crash dummy also tied with an inverted bead. I'm going to be testing out these inverted beads today to see how well they work compared to a jig hook and a slotted bead as far as hookup ratio and then also getting snagged on the bottom. So let's see if we can get one. There's a nice rainbow. Let me. Wow, he's a pretty one. Eat the crash dummy. It's a very pretty fish. There's one. Little rain. Ah, get over here. That might be a wild fish. Eat the crash dummy. Yeah, that's definitely a wild fish. See that crash dummy? It's definitely a great fly for the this dirtier water right now. A little bit high off color. You want something a little bit more bright? Try and get their fish. Try and get the fish's attention. There's one. Nice rainbow. He ate the crash dummy. I took off the top top fly because it's a little bit too much weight for this little scene. But it's a nice rainbow. So I changed over to a dry dropper to see if I could get one to come up and eat, eat this pretty large hopper. And then underneath of that, I have the Rainbow Warrior. That's a nice rainbow. Let's see if we can get him in here. He ate the bottom fly, he ate the, the Rainbow Warrior. Yeah, it's a nice rainbow. Rainbow ate the rainbow warrior. Little rainbow.
Little wild rainbow. Ate the rainbow warrior. Hooked into a pretty nice rainbow. Change back to Euro Rig. Have a Rainbow Warrior up top, and then I have my Crash Dummy on the bottom. And it's starting to get windy. That's a nice rainbow. See if we can get him in. Looks like he ate the bottom fly. Loosen up my drag. There we go. Wow. He's definitely got some power to him. Goodness. Oh man. Putting side pressure. You can see how far my rod's bent. But yeah, look at him. He's a pretty one too. That's a nice rainbow. Ate that crash dummy. Water's clearing up a bit, but still a brighter fly for these stock trout is not essential, but I really like it. There he goes. Back into his hole. There's one. Come here. Oh, it's a big giant chub. That's cool. Ball fish.
Little bit. And the school of brick trout. There's one. That's a nice rainbow. Wow. That was a big jump. Here. <laughs> wow. Got him on the reel. Oh, feeling drag and a jump. I'm here. Ah, oh, he's off. That was a nice fish, man. That was neat to see him. Now I'm fishing this much shallower ripple. I'm just fishing a single sandstone soft tackle. It has a pretty big bead on it because the wind is blowing, so it's gonna blow my cider all over the place. But what I'm gonna do to keep it from just getting snagged on the bottom I'm gonna adjust the angle of my cider so generally whenever you want your fly to be riding with like close to the bottom in deep water with a lot of weight you're gonna generally have your cider per or perpendicular to the water kind of like that and well, that's gonna allow you're going to get your flies to their maximum depth because it's straight up and down. They're not angled at all. But here in the shallower ripple, I'm going to have my cider angled. I'm going to have it angled a lot that way. So that's going to keep more. Uh, I don't have to like change tippet lengths. So I still have like four feet of tippet, even though I'm only fishing like a foot of water. So I don't have to change tippet length. And that really allows me to just fish any any sort of water type. And also, I forgot to mention, whenever you're changing the angle of your cider and it's not straight up and down, with your fly is straight up and down underneath, you have to take account where your flies actually are in relation to the cider. Because say you're fishing, there's a log in front of the in the middle of the stream going across it. You want to fish all the way up until that log, but you don't want to get stuck on the log. So you kind of have to learn and gauge. And that just comes over time of experience. But, but generally the cider is going to go way over top of the rock. And then the fly is way behind it. So a lot of times I see people, especially when they're first getting started, is they'll pull the cider out because they think the fly is like right underneath it's not so they're missing the best spot they're missing that spot where the fish probably is especially the bigger fish really tight and close to structure also I want to talk a little bit about ciders so I have about I don't know foot and a half of this is three colors of cider. I'd say my favorite color actually is the white. Um, I can see it literally during any single uh, condition, except whenever it's super, super sunny and it's just glare off the top of the water. I don't see the white very well. So then whenever it's like that, I like red cider or pink cider. 
and the red cider kind of cuts through the glare and I can see it really well. So does the pink. So my first section that's closest to the water, you can see my first section is white and then I have a tippet ring and my second section is pink. I'll do either pink or red and then I like generally chartreuse. Yellow is also good but I generally see chartreuse in almost all lighting conditions especially when it's uh, when I can't see the white or red the best. So I like fishing three colors that way I have I don't know most amount of visibility possible and also I like to tie a knot in between my ciders so diff the different colors so I have a knot in between the white pink and chartreuse and what that allows it to do is there's more surface tension on the cider which keeps it floating a little bit better it won't break through the water as easily so I can float the cider really well and sometimes you can leave long tags which help it float even better so like an inch to two inch a tag that will really help it float so I generally don't like those really long tags unless I'm really not I'm going to be fishing like a spring creek that's really flat and I know that floating the cider is going to be one of the big things there so generally I like to cut them so they're a little bit longer than just say your traditional tag from say your tippet to your leader or something but still not too long so that they get caught on everything there's one come here nice rainbow There's one. Nice rainbow. Ate the waltz worm on the bottom. High side pressure. And that really gets these fish in a little bit faster. I am on 5X, so. There we go. into a pretty big one. Yeah, he's pretty big. Eat that bottom fly. Ah, oh, come here. Got him. There's one. It was like a pretty nice rainbow. Get over here. There we go. Ate that waltz worm. There he goes. I had a lot of fun fishing Beaver Creek in Virginia today. 
I caught a bunch of wild rainbows, some stock rainbows, and even a few brook trout. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more fly fishing and fly tying content.